Hello everyone. It is January 2021 and TBS has released some new firmware for the Tango 2. So let's take a look at it. So now that you know that TBS has released a new firmware for the Tango 2, you're probably wondering what does the new firmware give you? And the best way to figure that out is to take a look at the release notes. And to do that, the easiest way I've found is that you fire up the TBS agent uh, and make sure, as always, that you click on this. Uh, if you haven't done any firmware updates for your Tango 2 before, uh, click on this little three dot menu, sometimes called the hamburger menu in the top right corner of your agent, and make sure you have include beta firmware checked. If you don't have that, you won't see almost all of the firmware because most of their firmware is released as a beta release. So let's see, let's go back to the settings and I'm gonna go here to Tango 2 and click on manage. And then I can click on firmware and right here we will see the, the latest version at the top and it's version 1.24. Not quite sure why this says it was released in November. Um, I think this is newer than that. Anyway, we can click on the release note here for version 1.24. And this is where you can see what the changes in this latest version are. So this version 1.24 has added the charging option in USB pop-up menu. So at first I was kind of excited by this. I thought it had to do with a lot of people have been complaining that when they use their Tango 2 in a simulator that it will charge the radio and you know, give the battery a full charge when they don't want to have their LiPo battery and their radio full charged all the time. But that's not what this does. This doesn't allow you to turn on USB off, on or off USB charging. What happens is when you plug in the USB port into your radio, it gives you another option in the menu for USB charging. So if you select that option, your computer won't see the radio as a joystick or as a device or anything else. It will not communicate with your computer at all. It will just use the USB port to charge your radio. So I'm really curious what the use case is for this. I, it doesn't quite make a whole lot of sense to me. So if there's a reason why you like this feature, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'm curious what what is the special use case for this? Why would you want to uh, put it in this USB mode, USB charging mode. Okay, so next up here, they have fixed the cutoff telemetry from the internal module while external is active. They have fixed an issue with uh, failure on turning on crossfire shot on external modules. They fixed an issue with additional delay when using the multi-protocol module. So if you've added the bay to the back of your radio, and you've got a multi-protocol module in there, there was a small amount of delay and they fixed that issue. They've fixed an issue with the backlight always being on. They have improved the music playing while you're using the radio. They've improved the SD card driver. So hopefully that means software updates will go faster. They have, and finally they have improved the, well, Im they have removed the crossfire menu and it's now accessible via the tools menu instead. Okay, so that's all the changes for the Tango 2's Freedom TX software. Then there's also changes in the Tango 2 Crossfire firmware. And take a look at what those changes are here in the same way. Click on firmware, take a look at the release notes. And this one says it, its date is 1 4, January 4th, 2021. And click on release notes for version 4.10. And it says, the big one here is that they've improved Tango 2 performance in a cold environment. Some people were reporting that when they fly outside and it's below freezing that the radio, the, the, the sticks don't work quite right. And I'm not exactly sure. I didn't seem to have this problem, but I've only flown from inside my car when it's cold and it's not super cold in my car, although my fingers get cold. Uh, but it has something to do with the calibration in cold environments. And it sounds like they have made an adjustment for that, so that shouldn't be an issue anymore. Uh, they've improved Mavlink message routing. I, I don't use Mavlink, so I'm not familiar with that one. They have turned on Wi-Fi after re-enabling the RF. There was a bug there. Uh, I believe there were some updates to Flarm in the world, so they've updated the Flarm in Crossfire to be compatible with that and fixed an issue with Flarm not showing up on GliderNet. 
Okay, so if you've never updated your Crossfire before, I'll just run through that really quick here and show you how it's done. And once you've updated Crossfire on your Tango 2, you will have to rebind your receiver in your drone. Not all the time for every update, but just about every update I've had to do. I've had to rebind my receiver. So make sure you, you remember how to do that. You power up your radio, put it into the bind mode, power up your drone, and it will automatically detect that it needs to do a firmware update. Say yes, let it do its update and wait for it to finish and then you should be all good. And that's all there is to it in this update. Uh, thanks for watching. Oh, one more quick thing before I go. If you like that little tagline slash logo thing I put at the end of my videos that says change your view, fly FPV, and if you get the double meaning of it, even better. But if you like that and wanna have it on a t-shirt, don't forget that you can get one just like the one I'm wearing right now and uh, you can also support the FPV Freedom Coalition in the process. To do that, just head over to the FPV FC's website and their store, so fpvfc.org store, and pick one out for yourself.